Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, so I thought it was time to do another video from my Gen 2 installation. I recorded some of this when I was first setting my system up, but I've only just got around to editing it. I wanted to run through how I've actually got my X setup working. So normally you can just emerge in X in your chosen window manager, but I had a few quirks worth knowing about. I've actually got three different GPUs in my system, and that's three different types of GPU. I've got the integrated Intel GPU. I have an AMD Radeon. I also have an NVIDIA GTX in there. So I have three totally different types. And I only want to use one of these in this setup, specifically the Radeon one, for my installation. Now that means that an out-of-the-box X configuration doesn't work on my system. It would have done if the graphics card that I actually wanted to use was the first one that was picked up, but that's not the case in my system. And as well as that, I also want to do some multi-monitor setup. So this installation runs through setting up X using XFC4, and it then goes through how to actually specify a config file that says I expressly want to use my Radeon. So might as well get going on it. So in the last video, I managed to get a basic Gen 2 system up and running on my NVMe disk using ZFS as root. Pretty cool, but now I need to do something with it for my desktop more than just use a terminal all day long. So the first thing I want to do is get X installed so I've got a user interface, although I'm eventually going to be using Wayland on a day-to-day -day basis. For now, I just want to get going, so I'm going to get X up and running using XFC4 as my window manager. To do that, we first start by installing X. So the easiest way to do this, if you're using the kernel configuration that I supplied in the last one, you should be good as all of the options that are required for graphics cards and other settings are already set in there. So it should be a case of x11 base slash xorg server and x11 term slash x term. We just want to use x term for testing purposes for now. And there are a number of ways you can install xorg, but this is probably the easiest way to do it. We hit enter there. So when we run that emerge, you'll see that after a second, you get a few errors appearing, saying that we also need the Glamour package, which is currently filtered out. So the easiest way to do that is for us to change our emerge and include auto unmask dash right, which will say that we're happy for that Glamour package to be added as well that's currently being filtered out. You won't get that message unless you're using ATI. If you're using ATI video package like I am, then you'll get this pop-up. Now, once we rerun that with our auto unmask write, like we've just done, then we can do dispatch conf, which will actually update the config file changes. Here we see a diff of what's happened, and we can confirm that we're happy with it. Then we just press U to use the new config changes. Now we should be able to go back up again and rerun our emerge. And this time it starts to download everything we need for our user interface. Now, as you can see, it's going to download 97 different packages. So this might take some time. We can pop over to a separate terminal and watch it go. As it starts compiling, all of my CPU cores are going to get filled up. But sadly, most of it is just running configure scripts. So we're going to be here for quite some time yet. At this point, it's time for a jump cut. So jump cut and all we've got now is X has been installed. So we need to then do an update of our environmental variables and load those in. And then if you've got a normal system with one GPU, it should be as simple at this point as just doing start X. However, I think what we're gonna see here is this isn't gonna work. So there we are, straight away we've got an error, which is no screens found. Now the reason for that is because I've got multiple GPUs. So what X is trying to do is specify um, one of my other graphics card, which I haven't got drivers for, is the default X one, and therefore it's failing. So the first thing we need to do here is figure out which graphics card I'm actually using. So if we do D message through grep-i, in this case, ATI, we can see, oh, if we search for Radeon, we can see at 00008100, we've got a bunch of stuff to do with the ATI Radeon. So that is the address for the ATI Radeon is on PCI bus number 81. We can also confirm that with LSPCI through grep-i Fire Pro. And we can see that we're at 81 is the address for it. Flip side is NVIDIA is uh, 01, and we've got 
both the Fire Pro and the Nvidia there. Now the one that I'm going to be using is the Fire Pro. So we need to remember that 81 for later use. And now, unfortunately, we need to start creating a custom X config file. So to do that, we go into etc x11 xorg.conf.b. There's a default file here, which is 20opengl.conf. We don't need that one for now, so we can remove that. And then we need to start creating files manually. So the contents of the files here basically define how the X server is configured. And although we could get away with only doing a few of them, we might as well start specifying them all just for consistency. So they are loaded in alphabetical order, where obviously numbers are then numerical order. So you can name your files whatever you want. I'm going to call them numerical. The first one we're going to do, I'm going to call 10keyboard.conf. And this just defines an input device for our X server. So I'm going to call it keyboard1. It's going to use the keyboard driver. And I'm going to set the auto repeat option on it. And end section. Not very exciting, but we do have a few of these to do. The next one I'm going to do is a similar one. I'm going to create a mouse config file. And that again is going to be an input device. I'm going to call it mouse1, driver is mouse, and end section. Most of this not terribly exciting. Next one is even less exciting. That is going to be a monitor config file. And this one literally is just a placeholder for now. We're going to have more in here later when we start doing multi-monitor configuration. And finally, we get to the configuration for the graphics card. So if we edit, we'll call this one radion.conf. And this is the main one we need to care about if we have multiple GPUs in our system. So we create a device section. We give it an identifier, which is a name we can reference it with. So I'm going to use the model of the graphics card itself. We then specify the driver, which in this case is Radeon. If you've got a newer card, it will be AMD GPU. If you're using NVIDIA, it will either be NVIDIA, um, NV or Nouveau, depending on which module you've got. But it basically ties into the kernel module you've got, which is providing the graphics for your card. Then there's a couple of optional extras on here which should work. So we'll specify it's using the Glamour acceleration method. Uh, we'll do a tearing option on it. And then we need to tell it where it is. Now, if we save this for now, if we do LSPCI whoop, through grep-i radion, you will see it is 81. So you would be mistaken for thinking that we would do something like that to say where it is. Unfortunately, the X configuration uses decimal and LSPCI and DMessage use hex. So we have to convert 81 in hex into decimal, which is 129, but Google will help you do that if you need to do it. If the number is less than nine, less than or equal to nine, you don't need to worry about changing it. And finally, we just say which screen this is on. Two more sections to go. The next one we define our screen for the configuration where we in effect tie a monitor and a GPU together. So there we are, we've now defined a screen and we've basically tied together the monitor and the graphics card. And finally, we need to configure the entire X server's layout. And here we define a layout which is gonna tie everything we've just done together. So in effect, the screen is our keyboard and mouse, and then, sorry, the screen is our GPU and monitor, and then we're gonna tie that together with our mouse and our keyboard. And at that point, we should have everything done. So we can try doing start X again. Now this looks better. I have to briefly change my monitor inputs because I'm currently using a couple of different cards here. And there we have it. Although it doesn't look very glamorous, all we installed was X term. So that works. Now we wanna do control F1 to go back to console kill X and at this point we know that X is now working with our configuration and we've got it working on my AMD GPU. So the next thing we want to do is actually install a better window manager. At a later date I'm going to get Wayland working and I'm going to go with potentially KDE maybe E at that point but for now I want to get up and running as quickly as possible because I actually have other work I need to be doing. So I'm going to go with XFC which is a nice lightweight but still highly configurable window manager. So what we're going to do is first of all we're going to do this command: e-select profile list, 
and this gives us a list of the different configurations that a system might have by default which helps when you're doing further emerges to ensure the correct use flags are done and because we're going to start using X stuff we want to change our profile to be that of a desktop so we do that by doing the eSelect profile list followed by an eSelect profile set and then the number for just desktop if you're using GNOME or KDE you would select the appropriate ones there and again there's different versions depending on whether you're using OpenRC which I am or System D. So eSelect profile set three. Once that's done, we want to do our emerge. So emerge XFC base XFC4 meta, and this should pull down XFC and compile it. The XFC4 meta package is basically XFC4 and a bunch of other stuff that comes with it that helps it. 188 packages, that's time to cut. Well, after a very long time, almost two hours, all of the XFCE, all 189 of them, various packages have now been compiled and installed. So there are now a few more, which I'm going to add as well. So I'm going to add the XFC terminal, mixer, task manager, selection of themes, the file manager, and a lightweight web browser. So let's do another rather ginormous emerge and see how long this one takes. So this time it tells us that there are some unstable packages that we want to use for my Dory and a use for it as well. Now I'm happy to go ahead with that. So when we do this, we repeat the emerge statement that we've got and add in auto unmask dash right. That will then stage the config file changes for us. Then we do dispatch conf and we hit U to use the changes. Then we're able to go back to our emerge and this time it should actually start the installation. Well, that took about another half an hour to go. Now that that's all done, we're ready to update our profile again with anything that's come from those packages. So we'll do an env update and we'll source etc profile again. So we're gonna to go to another terminal and we're gonna log in as my normal user. I'm actually gonna be running X with. For now, instead of having a login manager, we're gonna be starting it manually. And so all we're gonna do is echo xx start xfc4 greater than dot x in its rc which should mean whenever we start x it runs xfc4 and then we can test it as my normal user just by doing start x and there we have it that is our initial installation of x along with xfc4 as our window manager for now i'm going to terminate x we will go back to root and then the last thing i'm going to do is enable xrandr, which is gonna allow us to have a multi-monitor configuration. So to do that, we're just gonna emerge x11apps xrandr. Now we've got that in, we should be able to just run xrandr when we're running x to see which monitors we've got. So we go back over here, we start x. Now we should be able to run xrandr. And then we can suddenly see the two monitors that I've currently got connected to the card with display port dash zero and display port dash one. Now we're not going to, be able to see that very well on the current filming setup. So I'm going to run xrandr and xrandr dash q into a text file. And then we're going to stop XFC again. And then in here we can see the different ports that we've got. So we've got the display port zero and display port one connected. One could do 1920 by 1200. One could do 2060 by 1440 and the other two are currently disconnected. So this is then enough that we can actually start doing our multi-monitor configuration. So if we go back to where we had our X configuration and we edit our monitor configuration. Now this time we're actually gonna put something slightly more exciting in here. So we're gonna have Dell 2515 left, which is my main 25 inch Dell monitor on the left hand side. I normally have a three screen layout as you might have seen previously. And that's the one that's connected to display port one at the moment. Put a little note there so I know which one is on which. And then all we're gonna do is add a mode line representing the resolution that we want. So that was 2560 by 1440 at 59.95. We'll call that 60. And then we will add a preferred mode that we will say we want this one at 2560 by 1440 and 60 hertz. We are going to identify this as the primary monitor. So we're gonna call this one true. And then we will add a second monitor 
which we're going to call del24 and that one we're going to say is above the 2515 left hand side one now you can tweak this further and get it to a more exact position i'm not going to do that right now though because i've got to get the other monitor online everything set up to get it to where i finally want it to be and on that one we'll give it a preferred mode again and this time we'll make that 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz check that that's the correct one 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz once we've done that we then edit our screen to where we now tie everything together so we can move our previous monitor one and we're going to change that to be the primary monitor Dell 2515 left and we're going to use the display with a virtual desktop and this is going to cover the size of both monitors that we've currently got so our desktop size is then going to be 4480 by 2640 and then finally we want to make a change to our Radeon config and this is where we tie the individual ports to the monitors so we can have the Dell 2515 left is using display port 1 display port 0 is for the Dell 24 now we save that and we try running StarTex again and see if both monitors come up and although you can't actually see it on camera at the moment we now have dual monitor support so if I pan the camera up we now have both of the monitors online and working with that we want to terminate XFC again finally we want to just add composition support we'll create a new config file have the extension section and in there all we're going to do is enable composite and at that point we can quickly check everything starts again can confirm that X has now started again and with that all that's left to be done is for a snapshot to be taken as we're happy with it so we'll do a ZFS snapshot of our pool slash root slash gen 2 270411 and we'll call this one the X installed for root gen 2 then we'll do the same for home and finally just to make sure we've got a snapshot of everything in sync let's back up the boot one as well and with that that is X, XFC, everything configured, multi-monitor support on Gen 2, and good to go. Well, I hope that was fairly easy to follow through and it all made sense in the end. Ironically, since I've done this, I've actually switched which GPU I'm using over from my Radium to NVIDIA. The config files are all exactly the same. The only thing I've done is change which module I'm using to the NVIDIA ones, and I've changed the PCI port to correspond. The reason I've done that switch is I haven't got around to setting up my KVO installation, and the cooling fan is quite simply quieter on the NVIDIA card. So if I shut the ATI one down, my room's a little bit quieter. Only reason I've done that change for now. So the next video I'm going to do is one I hoped to integrate with this, but that ended up taking too long on this video. And that's a run through of what my desktop actually looks like now I finished it. So I have all three monitors up and running. I've got all my software installed. I've got my window manager configured. Now I haven't got all the videos doing all of that and it's down to your personal taste, but I thought it'd be nice to show what my day-to-day -day workload looks like in Gen 2 Linux. So, that will be my next video. For now, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, you can check out all the steps that are in this video over at my blog at guyrobot.tv, and you can also check me out on Facebook and Twitter at guyrobot.tv. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like. If you thought it was a load of rubbish and want to watch something else, or have got some feedback on other things you'd like me to be doing, then hit dislike. But most of all, please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. And I will see you next time. Thanks.